I am sitting in my driveway here in Billings, Montana. And right now there is a ground stop on our airport. And this thing is up in the sky. And I have no idea what it is. It's been there stationary for about the last 35 minutes. It's just floating there. That's what's the weirdest part. Of it. This thing is so weird. Well, what the heck is that? That's not the sun. What planet is that? Breaking news, the U.S. tracking a suspected Chinese spy balloon. The suspected spy balloon. The Chinese surveillance balloon. Chinese surveillance balloon. U.S. officials say China has sent spy balloons over the U.S. before. That the U.S. calls a Chinese spy balloon. The Pentagon saying this is maneuverable. China has control over it. Uh, this is a surveillance balloon. <laughs> That's not a moon. So for those of you unaware, there is currently a spy balloon flying over Montana. Uh, let's take a quick look at some videos that people have been taking from the ground. That's um, no moon. No. They're like, what is this? Uh, commercial airline pilots were spotting this thing as well. And people were, were curious, what is this object flying in the sky, which looks like another planet or something? A lot of people were like, is this a planet? They didn't really know what it was. It's about the size of three Greyhound buses. Yeah, so it's three, massive. Three buses. Very heavy surveillance or you know, technological equipment hanging from the bottom of it. Yeah. And uh, it's, go it's currently at about 60,000 feet. Yeah. Which is about double what your you know, passenger aircraft usually flies at. It's very high up. Yes. Um, and we're going to discuss a lot about this balloon. We're going to discuss um, why something like this is a danger and uh, dis also discuss the reaction that China's had to it and the reaction that um, the world's having to it as well. But It's currently over Missouri, by the way. Oh, it's over Missouri. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it was yesterday. Another end state. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, before we even get into this, we have to explain something to you. And it's something in China called the military civil fusion. It's going to be really important to understand this. It's super important to understand this, okay? So, military civil fusion, or MCF, is an aggressive national strategy of the Chinese Communist Party. Its goal is to enable the PRC, which is the People's Republic of China, to develop the most technologically advanced military in the world. As the name suggests, a key part of MCF is the elimination of barriers between China's civilian research and commercial uh, sectors, and its military and defense industrial sectors. Okay, now... I just wanted to say, you might this, this is like perfectly in line with some stuff you might have been seeing coming out of the DOJ, when mm -hmm. the key, FBI keeps making arrests of people like Chinese nationals that are stealing very sensitive technology yes. from the U.S. Very much in line with this. This is actually the program that China's employing. So, um, I can leave this up on the screen for a while, but the gist of this all, without reading the whole thing, is that... Um, the Chinese government utilizes the civilian sector um, in order to develop the military. So yes. any kind of research in the civilian sector is dual purpose. Yep, that's okay? right. And any kind of intelligence gathered in the civilian sector is immediately um, implemented in the military. That's too. right. So uh, this is going to explain a lot when China came out to say it's just a civilian aircraft or a civilian, you know, air balloon or whatever. You're right, because yeah. that just means it's the military, Correct. China. Now, high altitude surveillance balloons, how they work is uh, here's a diagram over here. You've got a helium filled balloon. You have solar panels, which obviously provide the power, and then you have your information package or your instrument package, which can consist of a number of different things. That's right. All right? Uh, since it is a surveillance um, balloon, suspected surveillance balloon, it's definitely going to have some very high-resolution cameras in there, and it's going to have a lot of other equipment to intercept signals and things like that. And just uh, instruments to measure weather and whatever else it may. You can put anything you want in there. Yep. Now, you might be wondering, you know, why, why would anyone use such an outdated, ridiculous, uh, um, you know, balloon? Yes. You know, why not just use a satellite to get images from space? Yeah, because, I mean, they were using balloons back in the Cold War, mm -hmm. right? So this oh, is yeah. Old. I mean, the World War II, Japan tried to send balloons over, you know to attack America. Dirty, with dirty bombs. Yeah, exactly. Weapons, yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is is that um, you cannot 
for instance, intercept radio signals with the satellite. When you've got a balloon floating in orbit like that, you can really intercept signals. You obviously are closer to the ground, so you can get better imagery with your higher resolution cameras than you can up there. But there, there are so many other things that you can measure. For instance, the air patterns. Yeah, the that's wind absolutely patterns. correct. Yeah. So, you know, so that you can test if you wanted to send over a payload of, yep. I don't know, biological weapons or, or whatever. nuclear yeah. or anything you wanted, or just, you know, to get into that airspace, you figure out all the air currents and so on yep. that re to reach your destination. And you're also testing the response times. You're yep. testing the kind of response you'll get from this sort of thing. There's all sorts of advantages to using a balloon. Now, uh, here we actually have a meteorologist who uh, ran a sort of a, a prediction of where it came from using mm. all the you know, weather routes and everything. And it does, in fact, originate from China, central yeah, China. That's right. Yeah. Um, there's some key features here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a press conference with a senior defense official. Mm -hmm. And it was noted that during the press conference that Montana, specifically the, near the area where it was fly, the balloon is flying over, is home to the Maelstrom Air Force Base with well over 100 silos of Minutemen intercontinental ballistic missiles. Yeah, Minutemen 3s, Minutemen 3s, right? Minutemen threes, right? Yeah. So... There is a reason that this was, people were, were feeling a lot really weird about this is, yes, it's old tech. Yes, it's a balloon, but it was lingering over these sensitive areas. And that's what got the attention of these officials, right? And I just wanted to give another, a, a little quick little note on why, you know, using a balloon, although archaic, would be mm -hmm. used today in 2023. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, radio signals as well mm -hmm. as weather patterns. Um, also, airborne sensors, right? Yeah. And deep ground penetrating radar is very limited from satellites, whereas balloons can do a lot more. But sure. one of the biggest key features of this is that using old tech sometimes makes a lot of sense in today's day and age because of the reduction in size of technology, right? Yeah. So a balloon can carry up an, an insane technological package. Correct. And it's cost effective. It can mm -hmm. slip under the radar. It's got no emissions, yeah. right? All of these features mean that you can resurrect ancient tech to really... <laughs> kind of bolster your surveillance and use really high-tech stuff in a tiny little package. Yeah, we're right. also going to explain to you, we're going to look at the responses from China and yeah. how they tried to hide it, but we're going to um, also just explain to you after you know we, we get into this just how ridiculous all of this is and just how impossible it is that it, this is just a civilian air balloon gone, gone astray. I think, again, the most important thing if you walk away from this video is you can go watch your news reports and you can watch all this stuff, which is going to have good information, good interviews with like generals and stuff. The most important thing you're going to get here is a succinct reason as to why they're doing this. But most importantly, you'll walk away from this episode knowing why China did this yes. and why it's super suspicious because when we analyze their Chinese versus their English language responses, mm -hmm. official versus unofficial, it gets really, really weird. Yeah, of and course. that's that's what we did. First of all, we have to look at the responses that we were getting from the usual crowd of um, CCP sympathizers and um, you know propagandists. So let me just set the scene. Mm -hmm. You guys turn on your TV, you're going on your Reddit, you're going on your news, right? And all of a sudden, you see these headlines coming out. Yeah, and you're like. Chinese spy balloon over the US. Of course, you're going to start to get a little interested, right? This is some old school Cold War era tactics. Sure. You're like, well, I mean, look, what's th going on? Right? To be honest, this is an absolute act of aggression. Yes. Why would China, how would China react if there was a US spy plane or US <laughs> spy balloon that flew into Chinese airspace? And not just like on the outskirts. No. Like near Hainan or something, yeah, yeah. but actually into the center of China. Because sure. think about it, Montana, uh, all these places that this balloon has been over yeah. is in the middle of the country. Yeah. And it's over sensitive sites. Yes. You know, so if you flew a balloon over uh, Beijing or a big military base in China, there would have been an uproar. Chinese state media would have gone ape. Everybody. They would have gotten all of their paid mis disinformation, misinformation agents out to go out and talk about it, right? Yes. So we're looking at a situation where Winston and I is, were first alerted with this, and we wanted to go check what was the official narrative from Beijing, and what did they tell their shills to go do? Yeah. We, we call them shills. They're basically people that are either paid or incentivized to work on behalf of China or Beijing's narrative, yeah. right, to go put it out there. Think of, think of like uh, agents, like disinformation agents from the Soviet Union. It's kind yeah. of like those tactics. So I thought we'd read you a couple of the, 
the immediate like knee jerk reactions that we got mm. from the, mm. the 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 sycophants and the sympathizers. For instance, uh, people saying, saw this on the news today and I laughed. Damn, how stupid can one be to believe China sends a balloon to fly over the Pacific Ocean to America to steal info? Come on. We have satellites in space and a space station. Also, how do you identify it's Chinese? And other people's like, that's what I find most reprehensible. They print what is a Pentagon talking point, suspected Chinese spy balloon, and literally none of them question it with basic common sense, as in, why would China use 19th century technology to spy on us? Well, we've already dis- like explained that. There was a concerted effort right out the gates, and I found this very interesting from someone that, what you know, as China watchers, we watch how they change and morph their propaganda. Yeah. And one constant theme I saw over and over again was, how stupid do you have to be to believe that this is a Chinese spy yeah. balloon? How stupid are you? You should read this quote, do this and this and this. And to make you doubt and be like, oh, am I am I dumb here? Yeah. Am, maybe I'm, I believe fake news? Yeah. Right? I mean, that was the idea. Yeah, let's continue. There's a couple more here. Yeah. This story seems hard, hard to believe. How on earth could China have a spy balloon over Montana? It would have had to travel across Canada. Nothing from Canadians on this? How certain are we that this is even from China? Um, I just wanted to read a good response kind of to this. Okay. Um, in, in the military sphere, what people were discussing, which is kind of in direct response. Yeah. Um, it, you know, this person said, like, it, we probably knew about it as, as Americans or American yeah. intelligence um, since it hit the Aleutians, right? Yeah. But they wanted to keep it quiet and keep tabs on it without the Chinese knowing that we know. Commercial airliner happens to see it, goes viral, and we have to respond publicly. Yeah. If it doesn't come down uh, on its own in the U.S., it will surely hit a storm, which will not get down. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and there also, there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from this. You can study what type of sensor, what frequency it reports on, what type mm-hmm. of encryption it's using, what's the control node, all these opportunities. That's why you're not shooting it down. Oh, yeah. You can study from it. You can learn more than what it was sent to do. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to go mm-hmm. and use this as an opportunity. This is clear propaganda. Um, I just wanted... A, I wanted you guys to know there is a proper response to all this stuff. Yeah. Right? Anyway, as usual, let's continue with some of the immediate uh, kind of defenses. And these are not even that immediate. Some of these were as as, as recent as like three or four hours ago. Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, truth. Wait, I got to get the right accent. Truth. It is not a Chinese spy balloon flying over the U.S. It's a lie. To start promote war with China amongst the American people, don't fall for this game's Stay awake. Spot on, because you're South African, you can do your native accent very well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's... You can not, turn it on. It's kind that's of my Af- Afrikaans. Accent, yeah. yeah, I can for like to be wearing a jean pant on a Friday. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> like seriously, that's, you know, Kabotarki over here trying to say that it's not a Chinese spy balloon and it's like an American conspiracy to start a war. Yeah. Somebody Great. Sent, somebody send us these. We're very not shocked to see all of these tweets that people are sending us. From the Chinese shills, like yeah. the CCP Chinese government shills, were spot on with what we thought they would say. Yeah. <laughs> Communist le- Leprechaun says, has anyone stopped to wonder why Xi Jinping commanded command his people to make the spy balloon white so it would be visible from the ground to the naked eye? This guy doesn't know a lot about these kind of balloons. That's kind of the color that they are uh, for a reason. Go look into the science. Again, it's meant all the... Do you see a trend in this propaganda? Yeah. You're stupid because you didn't think about this. I'm big brain. I'm smart. You don't want it to be black because then it'll expand from the... the, From the the, heat. The heat, the sun and all that. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, that was like only four hours ago that that was posted. Danny I'm Wrong says, Chinese balloons are spying on Americans. Oops, that's the U.S. government tapping into your phone. Chinese tech companies are spying on Americans. Oops, that's U.S. tech companies stealing your data to the government, selling your data to the government. The new McCarthyism is a blend of absurdity and projection. Again. This is a a bit of a morph, too. This is whataboutism here. I like to see a little sprinkle of whataboutism, which is interesting because you had... You're Mm -hmm. dumb. You didn't think about this. How dumb is it for China to do that? They'll never do that, right? You're just stupid. You didn't realize that. Then you have some whataboutism sprinkled in. Mm -hmm. But then you also have your little bit of racism and hatred thrown in there. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's racist to say that it's a spy balloon now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you get that. Yeah, (laughs) there's a lot of that too. Um, Diabetic Mao over here says, don't mind me just passing through. Boy, Montana sure is beautiful this time of year. They're just kind of making fun of it, saying, oh, it's it's so absurd that China would try to fly a balloon. How would you believe such a dumb thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, Then Hu Shijin, who is very well known. Yeah, yeah, of course. He is China State Affiliated Media. He used to be the editor of the Global Times, um, of course. He's been putting out a whole bunch of tweets. So he's, you know, Chinese government here. Yeah. Says the media directly labeled it as 
a Chinese spy balloon. Though the Pentagon didn't say so, the Pentagon has left more room for smears to media and members of Congress. The U.S. attacks against China has been systemat uh, systematic. The balloon is now a live target for U.S. to incite anti-China hatred. Did I call it? Did I call yeah. it? Ladies and gentlemen, we've covered everything. The balloon is in China. Uh, there's you don't yeah. be ridiculous even if it was from China it's not a spy balloon mm -hmm. you are this is just to spread McCarthyism and anti-communism don't fall for this Pentagon trick mm -hmm. and it's anti-China hatred now yes. to call it a spy balloon yeah exactly we've come full circle guys we've we hit all the bases yeah it's ridiculous anyway good old Hu Jin over here um one thing he doesn't realize is that people can still read his Chinese Weibo account this is what's so stupid yeah. CCP again. I always uh, have a little, you know. I talk to them directly because they're all watching. By the way, I checked our analytics, and there's like 700 Chinese mainland China IP addresses that watch our videos. Mm. So you can't do that without a VPN. And sure. There's no China VPN. Yep. So there's people in Beijing analyzing this. I'm talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you tips, but what I'm going to say is that it's really stupid to over and over again say something on the, the Western side of the internet where English speakers, or any English speaker, I should yeah. say, English speaking internet, where people could read, and then say the opposite or different things on the Chinese internet, because there's bilingual people in this world. Yeah. They exist. Continue. Anyway, so he, he's saying at the same time on his Chinese Weibo that communist China doesn't have to use balloons to gather the intel from the United States. Like, we can just use other stuff. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute nonsense, conflicting yes. shit. But the whole point is that everyone is trying to say this balloon is not from China or, you know, that kind of nonsense, right? Yeah. Then um, this is something you found yesterday. And I'd like you to explain this very succinctly what's happening here on Reddit. When yes. this story was being shared yesterday, you could see on World News, which is the biggest like news yes. Reddit sub subreddit, right? World News is under attack. Dude. Yeah. So... Here's the headline that was shared. This was, um, um, I don't know if, what was it, NBC News or something? But uh, it's MSNBC it. or something. Okay. Yeah. It says, suspected Chinese NBC. spy balloon found over northern U.S. That's the headline. Yeah, for okay? NBC, you're right, NBC News. So this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And I did a, a bit of an analysis. I wanted to see as soon as this broke what their, the deception techniques would be. Yeah. And it kind of lines up with what you just showed us with the, you know, the CCP shill types. Yeah. It's this idea that if you put something out there, you can trick a certain percentage of people to believe that it was fake. Yeah. So what we saw here, and this is a great example. You see that, what's the headline? It says, suspected Chinese spy balloon found over northern US, right? Yes. NBC News. You go out there. Maybe you're not going to read the article. You just read through the comments. Yeah, quickly. you read the you headline and you, you just look at it. Let's see what comments. other people are saying yeah. about it, right? Yeah. You go down and you look at it, it says nothing. The headline is misleading. The last part of the article reveals that they don't even think it's a spy balloon, right? And you know what's crazy about this? And then it's so yeah. sinister. This copy pasta, right? Yeah, here. so they paste then yeah. they paste what you think is something from the article. Yeah, you're like, because you didn't bother to read it, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, let's see what the, the military experts view. And then it goes through and talks about how it's probably not a spy balloon, right? Mm -hmm. It says another case of Redditors reading the headline but not the article. But they made me click and got that ad revenue. So let's say a good chunk of people read mm -hmm. that comment. They go, okay, I don't need to read the article. Now Now I know that it's probably not a, a, a spy balloon from China. Yeah. Right? And it's just a misleading headline. Yeah. Look over here. If you had actually clicked the link, you would know that this is not from the article that OP posted. Yeah. It's from a copy pasta article floating around. You done goofed by calling people for not clicking, man. But what he doesn't realize is this is very common mm -hmm. in both Chinese and Russian propaganda. Yeah. It's to prey on people that didn't go through the effort to read the article. Because why in God's name mm -hmm. would somebody go out of their way to put a misquoted thing about an article? You're, of course, you're just going to believe someone. It's like a quote, yeah. right? Here is an article. They said this and this and this. You're not going to instinctively not trust that. Correct. Right? This is the kind of really crazy yeah, I mean, shift just, just in propaganda to we've seen. Super simplify this. Imagine there's a headline to an article that says, um, you know, drought in Texas. Yes. Okay. And then somebody, but and the article d details that there's a massive drought. But somebody says, why do you even believe the headline? Because in the article, it says that there's huge amounts of rain and actually yeah. flooding in Texas. And then they paste There was like a drought, something. but it's done. Yeah, yeah, and they paste something um, in there like that looks like it comes from the article. Yeah. So people that see the headline, then they read that comment. They don't even read the article. And then yes. they walk away thinking, yes. actually, there are floods. 
and it's, not a drop. It's so, so it's sinister. It's real psyop stuff. It's mad psyop stuff. Yeah. And this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with right now. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting because we like to see Beijing's response and we like to see how it trickles down. Yeah. And we've noticed Beijing used to... Yeah, they used to be really direct and like, no, that's wrong, or no, we didn't do it. Now they they kind of employ this kind of like they don't care if you catch them out in their lies because mm -hmm. they have five other lies to look at too. So right? now now we've seen the kind of unofficial, yeah. the tweets, the the we did see actual official Hu Shijin is yeah. state media, but let's look at the China Daily, and this this article was even updated today. And they have a, an, uh, an article that they put out which says, time to prick spy balloon trick. Okay. That's an interesting headline, China Daily. So they got these so-called experts. Okay, they got four of them this here. This is pretty fascinating. And now this is Chinese official state media, yeah. China Daily. Okay, don't get more official than this. Nope. And they, they put out, they got these experts to say, you know, what's going on with yeah. this balloon. So... Um, the first guess is more of a political balloon. This morning, Fox News said that its suspected Chinese spy balloon was hovering over Montana, where there are sensitive U.S. ballistic missile assets. CNN has posted the same story, saying that the Pentagon has full custody of the suspected Chinese surveillance balloon and that we have communicated the seriousness uh, with uh, which we take this issue. Okay. Yeah. So far, this story has been catchy enough to get... Retired generals and patriotic young, young men in the U.S. interested. However, it seems to me that this is not a media event, but rather a political balloon from Washington to maneuver the domestic audience before <laughs> U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrives on his widely expected first visit to China. So, so just b before you continue. Yeah. So what he's saying is despite the spy balloon mm -hmm. flying over the U.S. Yes. And people reporting on it from both liberal and conservative media. Mm-hmm. It's not real. No, it's a it's U.S. A tactic. The U.S. made the balloon now. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next one because you, you get the idea. Um, yeah, these are the four expert opinions, and this is what they rushed out. Yeah. This is Chinese, again, Chinese. Yeah, you statement. can read the rest on the screen. Let's get to the second one. The, the others aren't as long as this. Second of one. Of course, by the way, that sums up by saying the people that are profiting from Sino-U.S. problems. Yes, so, you know, yes, You got to yes. throw the hatred in there, anti-China hatred. Yeah. Uh, the next one is just a trick to defame China. Defame it. In an era full of advanced technologies, including man-made satellites, common sense and a professional perspective will tell you that anyone that a spy balloon is a ridiculous assumption. The Pentagon's accusation is nothing but a story to play up the China threat theory. Ratcheting up tensions with China is a card that the US has played to add bargaining chips before US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's widely expected visit to China and a popular tactic of the US government for benefits. The US still adopts a Cold War mentality against China. Washington has established alliances such as the AUKUS to contain China and the China threat theory was used to excuse um, enhance U.S.-centered alliances. Besides, U.S. intelligence agencies need foreign threats, real or made up, to benefit from. But the Biden administration should realize that China bashing is akin to playing with fire. The tactics to win support at home by inciting hatred will also make the U.S. society more divided. This is the biggest load of projection, projection <laughs> you I've seen in a long time. China For always real. needs a foreign threat, real or made up. That is the <laughs> thing. I read this amazing thing. I wish we included this. Yeah. From a Chinese netizen. Mm -hmm. It is the most succinct. You have to be a Chinese reader to pick up on the nuances of it. Mm -hmm. But really, to sum it up, it was like, I learned to hate the West. I learned to hate all these countries. I learned that the enemy was Japan and America and all these, all these things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I learned this all my life, and I learned to hate and hate and hate. And why does China always need to have this enemy, an enemy, enemy? Yeah. Everyone's always anti-China, anti-China, anti-China. They're trying to take us down, bring us yeah, down, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And in the end, I realized that China's the only country that's doing this. Yeah. They're the ones that are projecting that actually we are the enemy to everybody. They're yeah. making us the enemy. It's not our fault as normal people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese people are not guilty of their, their the crimes of their government. Absolutely They're separated not. from this. But that's what the government is doing, yeah. right? They make constant xenophobic propaganda and shove it down the throats of everyone in China. We lived there over a decade, yeah. we know. Mm -hmm. And they really ramped it up recently. It's crazy. But I mean, again, that last opinion we looked at, they were trying to say that the US manufactured the spy balloon coming into America. Right. Here's another one. No evidence, Keep, no oh, accusation. Remember that part. That's very yeah, important yeah. for later. 
the US should carefully examine who the balloon belongs to and refrain from accusing China without sufficient evidence. Yes. Remember, guys, this is in China state media, China Daily. Back in 2013, former NSA contractor and whistleblower Ed, Edward Snowden had exposed that the US prison surveillance program had spied on its own citizens and European officials and a number of world leaders. What the hell does that even have to do with their spy balloon? With Blinken's upcoming visit, the U.S. politicians should be cautious in their words and actions. Hope the balloon case indicates the U.S. is willing to communicate with China on this issue. Communication should continue, but the far should stop. It's so almost offensive. Yeah, <laughs> by, by the way, here. like all these people that they're that are giving these yeah. opinions are experts. Like this guy's Shun Ding Li from Fudan University. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's the dean of uh, the Institute of International. Lying. You'll be studies. literally in line with the, the Chinese government's... All of them are like, you know, experts. And I think there's one more. Is there one more? Let's take a look. Yeah, one more. Accusation not credible. Um, let's see. Is this the most important one that will Maybe. be able to disprove with its let's own Let's take media? a look. <laughs> Although some Pentagon officials claim that they have confirmed the spy balloon belongs to China, doubts persist. As we all know, satellite reconnaissance technology has made great progress in recent years. It's hard to imagine any big country in the world will be clumsy enough to rush spy balloons into the airspace of other countries when it owns reconnaissance satellites. Mm. What's more, it's too early to judge whether the balloon is for military or meteorological observation purpose, or if it was a scientific research balloon that lost its way. The US government hyped up the Chinese spy balloon without uh, threat without fully gathering relevant information. This will only aggravate the US citizens aversion for and distrust of China. This is not only irresponsible, but also conducive to the improvement and development of Sino-US relations. All right. So let's get down to the real uh, meat and potatoes of all of this. Okay. What is the actual deal with this bloody satellite? Well, it turns out China admits claim that it was theirs. Yes. So you have to go through here and realize how the Chinese propaganda machine works. Yes. It doesn't care that it was wrong and sent all its agents out and even had official state media go out mm -hmm. and say, hey, They're it's like, not oh, yeah, balloon. how dare you accuse China of this balloon? Right. You don't know it's from China, blah, right. blah, blah. But then officially from the China Chinese government, they have admitted this comes from China. So you, it's just like, what's a great analogy is COVID, right? Sure. You go out, they go out there and say, first of all, COVID doesn't exist. We'll put you in jail if you even say it. Yeah. Right. Then they're like, okay, COVID does exist. Right. Mm -hmm. And it came and it comes from Wuhan, but yeah. it's just Wuhan. We're going to close it off. Right. Right. Then they're like, wait a minute. COVID exists, but it didn't come from even China. No. It came from America. Yeah. Right. You see how they change? Yeah. They make shit up as they go along. This mm -hmm. is the MO of China. And this is why no one in 2023, no diplomatic country that is trying to interface with countries around the world should be taking China seriously under the current government. Yes. This is its behavior. It lies, lies, and lies. Yeah, it does. And then finally, this is the Chinese state affiliated uh, media. This is Chinese state uh, said. Um, and shared the actual Ministry of Foreign Affairs press release and said, the airship is from China. It is a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological purposes, affected by the westerlies, and with limited self-steering capability, the airship deviated far from its planned course. The Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the U.S. airspace due to force majeure, however you say that, I'm not French, the Chinese side will continue communicating with the U.S. side and properly handle this unexpected situation caused by force majeure. How do you say force majeure? Is that correct? Majeure. I don't know. Ho, ho, ho. I don't do know I look French? No. Yeah. I mean, if you did, you'd cook really well, though. Let's move on. Here's the bullshit story. Okay. <laughs> if this was a civilian thing gone awry. Because keep in mind, that's the official response. Yeah. So let's just say the Chinese government knows that they have this civilian balloon the size of three Greyhound buses. It's gone awry. It's like gone off course now. Oh, no, we can't steer it. Oh, no, look. Oh, it just happens to be flying over Canada and it's about to fly <laughs> over America. Oh, no. Wouldn't you call? Wouldn't you call? Wouldn't you call and say, listen up, Washington, yeah. D.C. This is not we, surveillance. Yeah, we have a balloon that's yeah. gone off course. There's nothing we can do. It's yeah. screwed up. Um, do we, what you yeah, mean. Do, do what you We don't want to like cause a panic here. Yeah. We're not trying to spy on you. We're not trying. Like, this is a mistake. Wouldn't you do that? You would do that. You that would, would be that. common practice, even amongst countries that are not super friendly with each other. Yeah. 
you wouldn't be like, oh shit, look, it's gone off course. <laughs> oh, it just happens to have gone off course over some very like sensitive, sensitive missile areas. silos and, then hover. <laughs> and hovered and moved around. Yeah, it just happened to have Quote, gone off course. Clearly, they're trying to fly over sensitive sites. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they are. So it's like, let it fly over those sensitive sites and hey, we'll just keep quiet about it. You know, maybe, yes. maybe if they like say anything, then we'll be like, we'll start pulling out that, oh, it just went off course nonsense. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but it gets better it than gets that. It gets way better than that. Okay. Anyone who's lived in China, and this is why we can speak with authority, anyone who's lived in China knows that when you take a domestic flight, it will be delayed. Yep. Okay? And it's like, horrible. It's almost guaranteed that your flight yes. will be delayed. Yes. Okay? And there's a reason for this. Okay? Um, there are 23 restricted areas. Uh, aircraft are not allowed to enter or cross 23 restricted areas. And sorry, no, the yeah. And 176 prohibited areas. Basically, this is a map of China. Chinese airspace, over 80% of Chinese airspace is military controlled airspace. Okay. Yep. What that equals is, and I'll bring up another thing for you here, is a situation where um, there's very limited airspace for civilian aircraft. That's why you get so many delays. Because what happens is there are zones which you just cannot fly over yep. at all. But then there are zones. Blackout zones. Yeah, exactly. But remember, 80% of the whole airspace is military control. Yep. That doesn't mean that 80% can't be used. There are areas that are military airspace, but the civilian airline needs permission to fly through There's it. a good, uh, not analogy, a good example. Yeah. The airport where I lived. Yeah. Literally, you had to go through two military checkpoints. And it yeah. was just a civilian. It was just to fly a plane. It's just because the, the PLA also yeah. flies out of there, the plaf. Yeah. So basically, um, it it's never a certain thing. So what happens is if there's a flight that needs to fly, mm -hmm. they first have to okay it with the yep. military. And the military will be like, no, right now we're doing military exercises or no, right now we're that airspace, doing it. <laughs> yeah, this airspace is closed for whatever yeah. reason. Then they have to divert and they have the real to... real dicks about it. Yeah. And as you can see, there's a very set path that uh, planes are allowed to take. Yep. And because you've got these limited corridors, there's like a waiting queue for the planes to go through. Yep. Okay. So... I'm getting to my point here in a minute. So remember, like eight, between 80 to 90% of the Chinese airspace is military airspace. Correct. Okay. So here's just a little interesting thing. In 2016, Chinese airport punctuality put it amongst the 20 worst airports in the world. Hangzhou with the worst Chinese on-time performance of 41%. So only 41%. It's this is 2016. so bad. It's gotten worse. It yeah, was yeah. always really bad. Yeah. So only 40, that's less than half. Are on time. Of flights are on time because of For this, right? Planes. And you can compare it to Haneda, the busiest uh, airport in Tokyo, had an on time performance of 92%. Okay? Over 90%. Yeah, over 90%. Over 90%. <laughs> over 90%. Yep. Okay. Um, Anyway, the, the whole reason for this is because a large number of the military areas uh, block more than 70% of China Eastern's uh, airspace. You know, China Eastern is one of yep. their airlines. So um, let's take another look. If you look at these maps, which are showing, we take a look at Dan, the weatherman, or whatever his name was, the weatherman guy, the meteorologist who put together that uh, flight path where it came from. Which you can e easily do if you know, you know wind patterns. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a meteorologist. That's his this job. is his job. I turned it around so that we can actually see what it looks like. Yeah. So there you can see a side by side of where the balloon originated in China, sorry, up there. Mm -hmm. And you could take a look at the Chinese um, kind of airspace. Those black areas are the completely restricted. You may you, not fly you, over. You, you cannot go. You go in down if yeah, you're you Yeah, you may that. not fly over. So you're saying that this civilian balloon yep. flew across all of these restricted air zones in China through China's 90 90%. 90%. <laughs> 90%. 80, yeah. 80 yeah, to 90, yeah. 80 to 90% uh, military controlled airspace. Yeah. This civilian yeah. balloon yeah. was just allowed to fly through the entire country, like more than half the country. Yes. And look at the path it took through some massive, like really important areas. It flew down there past South Korea as well. Yeah. Okay. Over Japan. Yep. <laughs> okay. This piece of shit balloon. Yes. You're telling me that this piece of shit balloon that's a civilian aircraft that just kind of went out of control was allowed to fly through all of this restricted airspace in China? That's bullshit. Absolutely not. And that's that's the thing. We watch them say, no, it's not ours. Yeah. No, it's not a surveillance craft. Uh -huh. Okay, it's ours. 
okay, it was just a civilian aircraft, but it, you know, it was just an accident. We didn't know about it. Yeah. And you managed to try to pull the wool over the eyes of the entire world when it's just right there. We have the path. As an avid drone pilot in China, I often would run into situations where I couldn't fly my drone because of military controlled yep. airspace. All the time. You know what I mean? I... That ties into how I actually left China, which yeah. I can tell you another time if you're not familiar with my story. But it is very, very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's a massive balloon the size of three Greyhound buses floating through restricted military Guys, zones in China. We had the PLA <laughs> yeah. take apart our drones and batteries and line us up on a car and take our photo to surveil us for days on end because we had a drone that we were using to film camels. Yes, in Inner Mongolia. In Inner Mongolia. Where there's nothing. Where there's nothing there, right? Mm. So you gotta understand the perspective here. Yeah. China knew there was a freaking balloon the size of three Greyhound buses going over 80 to 90% of its restricted airspace. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's definitely military. If it yes. was civ if it was a civilian balloon, it would it's have been- It's common sense. It would have been shut sense. down. It would have been taken down. Yeah. It would have been stopped. But no, not only was it not stopped and allowed to fly through there, all this restricted airspace and all this bullshit in China, but it was also allowed to go and fly over Japan. Yeah, Japanese people were seeing it, right? Yeah, yeah. well, apparently. apparently. And fly, flying over Canada, by the way, Canada, and this is unconfirmed as of yet, but Canada has apparently spotted a second balloon, which they're monitoring right now. Yes, that's important. This yeah. is part of the breaking story is that and, we're not, it's not confirmed, but it's yeah. suspected. And it, it could it could be the same one, but they've also summoned like the Chinese ambassadors to ask why this has happened because it flew over canada too yeah yeah, for sure okay i want to ask you a question yeah so we went through a lot of these notes and stuff and we, we understand why it's not been shot down there's a lot of there's going to be intelligence calculations yeah. military calculations all this kind of stuff what yeah. i want to ask you is when this is you know the balloon's been obtained or there's some information that's been gleaned off of it right from yeah. u.s intelligence and then they make some sort of statement to the public and they say yeah, actually, we can confirm like our previous suspicions. You know, let's just say hypothetically this happens that this was a Chinese military balloon, spy, spy balloon. Spy right? balloon, yeah. What does China say in response to that? They'll just say that, oh no, it was a weather balloon, but you know, it has all this high surveillance equipment on it because we wanted to test it, and oh, we couldn't turn it off, so it just kept <laughs> taking photos of your missiles and stuff. Right, because missiles. What if? What if? <laughs> You're looking at that and you're, yeah. they're like, well, there's actual, like, there's hard evidence on this in, in, intelligence package that's hanging oh. from it, the payload, that it wasn't just for weather, it was for, you know, spying on missile silos, right? What, how do you say that that's just a weather balloon then? What the official response, what I think is going to happen yeah. is the English response will be like, that's lies, whatever, you know, it's not true. You're just listening to fake news from the, from the Pentagon. Yeah. And then on the Chinese side, they'll, they'll be like, ha, oh, we got all this we, great we data. Got this great yeah. Stuff. yeah, we found out everything we wanted to know yeah, on this. Like, thank you to the civilians participating in our great civilian military operation. Yeah. I did want to talk about the American response to this threat. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm fairly sure that they knew about it, like you said earlier, you know, way, way before anyone was yes. alerted to yes. the fact, because that's usually the way these yeah. things go. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that they did do, of course, is while it was over Montana, is they scrambled some F-22s yeah. to intercept. And right. I actually listened to the radio chatter uh, of the refueling aircraft going to refuel the Raptors and so on. Okay. And there is something that they are definitely doing, and it's called signals intelligence, Signet. You see, if you shot it down um, and you just blow it up or whatever, they kept saying like, oh, the reason they don't want to shoot it down, they're concerned about civilian casualties on the ground. I don't know, man, like Montana's a big state, a balloon falling off the sky. Yeah, it's got a payload. That might hurt someone. That might kill someone. But I have a feeling like it's not going to be that bad. I already, um, I already read the, the theories. It's, it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. yeah. But, a lot to learn. But, you know, the intercept packages that you have in these F-22s, they mm. should be able to do this uh, signal intelligence gathering. In other words, they'll be able to um, decode what it's doing from the signals it's submitting, where it's communicating to, how it's communicating, what, what, it, what instruments it's That's using, right. all that kind of thing. And you can do that without actually 
um, attacking it. As long as you have it within range of, mm. and not letting it get out, off course, basically. Yeah. You yeah. can follow it around. Yeah, it's easy enough. Mm. So I think this is going to um, actually be a wealth of information yeah. that's very useful. Could be a boon for the US. Yeah, it, it's very useful to see what the Chinese spy balloon is actually up to. Yeah, um, one other thing I forgot to throw in, there was a, a the defense general, right? Yeah. It could be scooping up sing signals uh, intelligence. In other words, they're looking out for cell phone traffic and radio traffic, right? Yeah. Which is, lines up with what we're talking about, the limitations of satellites versus yeah. balloons. Yeah, because right? you can't do that. Yeah. That's correct. So they'll be able to figure that out, you know? Yes. And um, Yeah, the whole shooting it down thing, like I get it. I understand that logic, but you have to understand there's a huge calculation to be made to make those decisions. And mm -hmm. then there's also too many advantages to... to, to that you're throwing away if you're doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it should be yeah. captured. Yes. So first you capture all the intelligence, intelligence you can in this passive way. Yeah. And then I presume that they'll find a way to bring it down safely over the sea or something and capture it. We'll, we'll be on top of this probably for the next couple of weeks, uh, depending mm -hmm. on what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to see a response from U.S. officials to see what they've got off of it. It'll yeah. probably be a while. But I'm also, one thing you can count on us for is we're going to be watching very intently to see shifts in China policy. Because mm -hmm. really, the you know, a huge takeaway from this is that Blinken's trip yeah. is going to go have a, you know, a diplomatic trip with China has been canceled. It has been because canceled. Because of this. It should right? be canceled. Yes. And it absolutely, it was the correct move. Yeah. Um, not telling anyone how to do their job, obviously, but if it wasn't, I would be more concerned. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we, we just, you just have to step back again, okay? Yeah. A surveillance balloon. Mm. It is a surveillance balloon. Yeah. It's got, it, that's what it's designed for, okay? Even if it's supposed to be a civilian airship, as they yes. say, it's got all the surveillance equipment on it for, even if it is just to sense weather patterns or whatever, it's still got equipment there to record information. Yes. So this balloon, it's not just a balloon, it's not just like a party balloon, like, yeah. you know, it's f being flown from China all the way to the USA without yes. a word being said from the Chinese government. That's the most absolutely concerning part. absolutely aware that this thing yes. is flying through because they monitor their airspace so tightly. Yes, we know. That there is no way, like I said, I'm going to bring that, um, that little graph up that I made earlier again. There's absolutely no way that they would not know that this balloon flew over half the country. They knew. Yeah. They absolutely knew. Through it's all called of their, being intentional. Yes. Through all of their restricted airspace, all of their military mm -hmm. airspace, it flew through all of that. Yes. It flew all the way into several and over several countries. Yes. <laughs> yes. Into several sovereign airspaces. Sovereign airspaces, yeah. Okay. It did all of this. So they didn't alert Japan. They didn't oh. alert Canada. They had many tries. Yeah. They didn't alert. It like skirted South Korea there. Yep. Um, they didn't alert. It even looks like it went over one of the islands there. Yep. Uh, they did not alert America, of course. Nope. Now, that shows intent to be sneaky yep. and underhanded, and it shows an intent to do surveillance and, and spy craft. Because, hey, if they could have gotten away with it yeah. and not mentioned it, they would have. So mm -hmm. I want to remind people that this is not... It is out of the ordinary, but it's not the first time that they've done this. No, it's okay. not. China's done this before, and mm -hmm. that's... Something that the U.S. Def uh, defense official was saying that the, the weird thing was is that this time, the reason that it's so alarming is that it's appearing to hang out for a longer period of time and it's more persistent than the previous instances. Yeah. That would be one distinguishing factor. So to have all this new tech on the balloon, much more powerful technology, so yeah. we, we, we can assume surveillance technology. Absolutely, right? yeah. Much more high-tech uh, payload package here and then it's spending longer time trying to glean information what we suspect yeah. it's it's something to worry about you yeah. know it's just one of those things where we've never jumped on anything when we don't think it's not if, if something's not worth going into or it's being sensationalized or we can't prove something yeah we won't talk about it but this is one of those things that really it pricked our ears up because mm. this is it's in a sign of aggression from yeah. china and it's a sign of a new it's a sign of a new china policy to really just kind of give the middle finger without any sense of repercussions. There is one thing here which I think is very important. Sure. It's the Global Times. China's uh, English state media. And this was released, uh, like I said, just a few hours ago. Sure. <clears throat> so this is after China admitted that this was a balloon from China. Yes. Yes, it's ours. They, they tweeted out from their official account said, 
Recent signs sent from US on China have been utterly chaotic, which may bring more uncertainty to strained relations. Analysts urged US to be sincere in fixing relations with China instead of making provocative actions, especially amid the balloon stunt. That's what are they saying? <laughs> And then, like, and they, their article is balloon stunt becomes latest chaotic signal sent from U.S. on China. You see this whole like de not dehumanizing but belittling language, right? I said this. This is their tactic. You're yeah. you idiot. You don't yeah. understand this. Just a stunt. Yeah. Right. No, it's a big deal. Yeah, the, the little excerpt here is a spokesperson from the Chinese Foreign Ministry on Friday confirmed the balloon was an airship from China, but rejected the spy claim, saying that the civilian airship used mainly for meteorological research purposes deviated from its planned course after being affected by westerlies and due to its limited self-steering capability. Um, the Chinese side... Uh, sorry, the Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the U.S. Yeah. space due to force majeure and will continue communicating blah, 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 blah. Um, and then they go on about how, before the facts, the U.S. military and media accuse China of spying. Um, and this incident has brought the U.S. recent hyping of the China threat to a new level. And so they go on about how it's America's fault. Yes. It's America's fault that China sent... Just like America started COVID. Yeah. America, America's fault that China sent a spy balloon into sovereign airspace yes. over America. Yes. That's, what this the is hell? Where, this is where we're at. Because you're meant to be confused, yeah. thrown off target, and belittled. Yeah, so I just don't understand. It. It's just fake news, right? Yeah, it's bullshit. Like, seriously. <laughs> you want to turn this around? Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Go like, for it. China's a face country, right? Yeah. Your means. Yeah, yeah. If you deal with it, if it means like if you lost face. Sure. It's the most important thing. And that's why the Chinese government can never be wrong. Yeah. But if you're claiming that it's a civilian balloon mm -hmm. and sorry it ended up in your airspace, we didn't know because of the winds, then you just admitted that your air force. And your capability and radar to find this kind of stuff is broken and you can be invaded tomorrow. Yeah, you can track <laughs> you your own freaking balloon. balloon. Sorry. Again, gonna... uh, before we, we wrap this this little segment up here is we have to once again Very important. take a look at this. So why is um, MCF so important to the Chinese Communist Party? The CCP sees MCF as critical to advantage its regional and global ambitions. Yep. It believes that artificial intelligence will drive the next revolution in military affairs and that the first country to apply AI to next generation warfare will achieve military dominance. MCF aims to pave the way for, P for the PRC to be the first country to transition to intelligent warfare and therefore develop the military capabilities it sees critical to achieving these goals. What technologies are targeted under the military civil fusion. Key technologies being targeted, and pay attention here, um, under MCF include quantum computing, big data, semiconductors, 5G, advanced nuclear technology, aerospace technology, and AI. These weather balloons fit very, very neatly under the aerospace yeah. technology target of MCF. The PRC specifically seeks to exploit the inherent dual-use nature of many of these technologies, which have both military and civilian applications. How is the PRC targeting, targeting these technologies? The CCP is developing and acquiring key technologies through licit and illicit means. These include investment in private industries, talent recruitment programs, directing academic and uh, research collaboration to military gain, forced technology transfer, which is what they do with a lot of companies that get things made in China, intelligence gathering and outright theft. The CCP's MCF strategy allows a growing number of civilian enterprises and entities to undertake classified military R&D and weapons production. The CCP also exploits the open and transparent nature of the global research enterprise to bolster its own military capabilities through bodies like the China Scholarship Council, which requires academic scholarship recipients to report on their overseas research to PRC diplomats. So, finally, the final paragraph, why should we be concerned about MCF? MCF threatens the trust, transparency, and reciprocity and shared values that underpin international science and technology collaboration and fair global business practices. 
In a clandestine and non-transparent manner, the CCP is acquiring the intellectual property, key research and technological advances of the world's citizens, researchers, scholars and private industry in order to advance military aims. Mm -hmm. Joint research institutions, academia and private firms are all being exploited to build the PLA's future military systems, often without their knowledge or consent. Doesn't this perfectly line up with that? Yeah. You know, like, why is everyone talking about how this is so outlandish and like, well, this is unprecedented and stuff. It's a big deal, but it's right in line with the military goals. And it yeah. it really trickles down to the craziest things, like my findings when I did the, the expose on the DNA testing companies, yeah. where Americans and people abroad are sending their DNA information because they want to see their ancestry or their pregnancy data to labs in China, which are taking that DNA information. Yeah, or the, right? the pregnancy test. The pregnancy test, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. The pregnancy test as well. They're, they're these companies that are doing that, and it's all part of the civil military fusion. It's how can we get information we could use to bolster our military from civilian projects? Yes. And it's very much in line with this, especially in their own language, saying it's a civilian operation, civilian balloon. Yeah, right? it's civilian aligned. balloon is bullshit. Well, it doesn't matter even if it was, right? And... I'm just going to be completely honest with you here. Anything that's got anything to do with flying in airspace in China cannot be civilian anyway. No. Okay? It has to be military. Yes. Anything that's tied to um, even telling the weather and stuff in China is going to be tied to the military Correct. anyway. Meteorological satellites and imagery and all that goes through China's military. It's going to be linked to the military. There is no civilian balloon club. <laughs> They don't have that. Dude, it's not. It's not. Don't talk shit about my civilian balloon club. I mean, club I mean civilian surveillance balloon club or civilian <laughs> meteorological balloon club. Yeah. No, it's let's not meet civilian. After school. <laughs> yeah, let's go launch like multi-million yes. dollar balloons with the, with tech packages. Yeah, exactly. That's our civilian thing that yes. we do. It's bullshit. It's military. You are being misled. Yes, it's military civil fusion. Yes. And again, this can also relate to things like TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good analogy. Any, yeah, any of these things. It's Oh, it's out there in the civilian, but you know, how can we use this for military? Because that's how China works. Yes. The Chinese government is like, anything that's civilian is yeah. also military. It Correct. also belongs to the government. Correct. We can tap into it if it's got a military potential. Correct. That's no moon.